Day 7. Are you making it up or is it true? Kelly was a raven beauty who strutted into my office wearing a cream silk suit and a determined expression. She had hired me the day before to make her dreams come true. No ifs, ands, or buts. Dream making was serious business to Kelly, and she had a lot of dreams. Her dream list included surrounding herself with more supportive friends. She had read my first book, Fearless Living, and knew how fanatical I was about the importance of support. Things such as, no one can be fearless alone, or no one person can satisfy all your needs, that's where good friends come in, or love is easier when you share your joys and sorrows with a friend, were ringing in her ears when she arrived for our first appointment. Hesitant to confess that she had few to no actual friends, Kelly tried to convince me her friends were the problem, not her. She told me some stories that were hard to believe, such as how her ex-best friend was secretly in love with her boyfriend and tried to steal him away, or how a past friend purposely spilled a drink in her lap at the office Christmas party the previous year, or the time she had asked a friend for help and he just flatly said no. As I sat listening to story after story, I silently wondered how every single friend could be so inconsiderate and selfish. Could it be true? Sure, it could, but I doubted it. When I was younger and unsure of who I was, I too went through friends like water going through a sieve. I could barely keep them in my life for more than six months. Convinced that no one would ever understand me or really like me, I set up impossible tasks to test their love before I ever got close. I asked them to think of me before themselves, agree with my opinions, and have the same enemies I had. Because isn't that what friends should do? Boy, was I wrong. Not that my friends didn't want to help me. They just had their own lives to worry about. But back then, I needed them to be true to me rather than to themselves. Any lack of attention felt like a betrayal, and I wasn't going to put up with it. I would dump a friend at the mere hint that she would pick someone over me, didn't agree with me, or didn't call me back pronto. Victimized by my lack of support, I would wail on and on about how I gave so much, and my so-called friends would just take and take and take. I was loaded with insecurities, but I didn't see it that way. I had convinced myself that my friends were the problem. They weren't loyal enough, giving enough, loving enough. Of course, I rated myself an A plus in all of those categories. I didn't see any connection between cutting them out of my life and my lack of self-acceptance. I just thought I had to take care of myself, and I couldn't be bothered with all these people emotionally draining me. My friends didn't have a chance. Neither did hers. Are you making it up or is it true? I asked. I had stopped Kelly mid-sentence. What do you mean? Of course it's true, she said with great irritation. I thought you were supposed to be on my side. Oh, I am, Kelly, I retorted. Yet, being on your side doesn't mean I will always agree with you. So again, answer the question. Are you making it up, or is it true? Which story are you asking about? It was a stall tactic. Any story is fine. Pick your ex-best friend if you'd like. Was she really trying to steal your boyfriend away? Honestly? Asking the tough questions is my job, and I relish the opportunity to help my clients see the light regarding how their false perceptions give them permission to make decisions that are basically built on lies. Lies we tell ourselves so we don't have to confront a friend or ask for help or face embarrassment. I was Many Kelly of us would rather kill off friends than face It was up truth. to her if she was going to come clean and be fearless or get stuck hiding behind her mask. I was silent. I was going to wait it out. After what seemed like hours, she finally spoke with a voice that was barely audible. I don't know. I, I thought so. Whenever I hear, I thought so, it tells me that you don't know. You aren't sure and you're guessing. Guessing doesn't build intimacy, it builds walls. Kelly was so scared to find out the real reason behind her relationship problems that she chose to conveniently blame her friends. Now, for all of you who are thinking, well, what if there was a grain of truth in her stories? Well, let's say Kelly's ex-best friend did flirt with her boyfriend. Are you telling me that it was purposeful, manipulative, and evil? Or was it harmless, fun, and playful? Kelly's level of security in her relationship would determine that answer. And more important, Kelly wasn't willing to have a truthful conversation with her friend to find out her intentions. Kelly's look of confidence was just an act. Inside, she was scared to death that she wasn't lovable.
she unconsciously started to look for excuses why her boyfriend would leave her. Accusing her boyfriend of lying to her became a mode of operation for Kelly. She just kept pushing and testing him until eventually he did leave. One of the main reasons we turn a small situation into a huge problem is to justify our feelings. We feel bad, so there must be a reason. Aha, best friend flirting with boyfriend, that's it. And off we go, taking innocent gestures and turning them into evil acts of betrayal. Think of the people who have betrayed you. Are you sure they betrayed you? Did they plan on hurting you? Were you the target all along? Or was it an innocent action executed on one of your bad days? Kelly had to be honest with herself. To gain perspective, it was time to separate facts from fiction. That is, what actually happened versus her interpretation. To help her gain confidence and deeper intimacy, I asked her why she didn't ask her boyfriend and her friend about their intentions, rather than just getting angry and blaming first. Bottom line, Kelly needed to gather facts. I understand that when emotions are running high, facts and fiction appear to be the same, but they are not. One is the truth, and one is fabricated from bits and pieces to create a new reality. When we make things up about the way people think or feel, it only confirms our low self-worth. The woman in the corner of the room giving you a dirty look probably isn't even looking at you. She's probably just thinking a thought in your direction. You got passed by for a promotion? Does your boss really hate you? Or did it happen for another reason altogether? Are you willing to ask for an explanation? Or is it easier just to brush it away with the handy excuse, my boss doesn't like me? What about your last failed relationship? Did they break your heart on purpose? Were they really a jerk? Name calling is a good indication that you're taking things personally. When that happens, it is so easy to fabricate a reason why they're treating you that way. Of course, it's rarely something you did. I love it when I hear people use the rationalization, they're just jealous. Oh, please. Perhaps 1% of the time that would be true. But I believe accusing someone of jealousy is just an easy out. There doesn't have to be any real conversation, only condemnations. That doesn't help make dreams come true. I guarantee that it tears them apart. I'm embarrassed to admit that I have found myself acting that way over traffic. Take, for instance, the last time I drove on the 405 freeway in Los Angeles. A green pickup truck with chrome hubcaps cut in front of me at 65 miles an hour. My first reaction was, I can't believe that guy. What a, a jerk. That is disproportionate to the is? event. I always stop and ask myself, am I making it up or is it true? So I asked. The answer, I was totally making it up. I was already angry about something that happened that morning, but I was trying to ignore it. The other driver just became my scapegoat. The minute I realized what was happening, I asked myself, what else could be true? That question is designed to help you put your emotions to the side while giving you time to contemplate new perspectives. When you come up with only one rationale for anyone's behavior, it proves you want to be right more than you want to be open. Focus on expanding your creativity by coming up with at least three reasons. It isn't about excusing their behavior. It is about understanding it and allowing yourself to see things differently. Perhaps he didn't notice my car because I was in his blind spot. What if he was trying to get someplace fast like the hospital? Maybe his mind was distracted because he was fired from his job, and so on. Allowing myself to brainstorm other reasons that his car pulled out in front of me is an exercise in compassion. It helps me to see the driver as innocent. Notice I didn't make up a negative reason that would have attacked the driver like, maybe he's just trying to push his weight around, or he must be really insecure, or he's just not a good driver. I didn't put him down to make myself feel better. If I'm going to make something up, it might as well empower me. Putting someone else down does not make me feel good about myself. Being creative, compassionate, and understanding does. Be willing to give up the security of making things up for a life filled with intimacy. You can't get close to anyone if you aren't willing to have a conversation that might lead to disagreements. Making things up keeps you isolated and self-righteous. Asking clarifying questions gives you the opportunity to connect instead of judge. I realize that it's a simple example, yet simple is the perfect place to start. Things become more emotional and more important the closer something is to you. When that is true, it's hard to have perspective and have the courage to ask, 
Am I making it up, or is it true? Today, practice being true. You want to change your life? Answer the following questions to find out what is true or false in your life. What stops you from being true to yourself? What excuses do you make when things don't go your way? What things are you making up about the people you love? For example, just because you think your father doesn't love you doesn't mean it's true. Check your emotions at the door and focus on facts and facts alone. List the emotions that you feel when you make things up about people. For instance, perhaps someone looks at you and turns away. You feel rejected. Do you make up a story about the person, that they're jealous or selfish? If you had to ask yourself, am I making this up or is this true? Before you could speak, how would your life change? Learning what situations trigger your urge to make things up will allow you to address the reasons you do it. When you make things up, it's a defense mechanism. You have to decide to give up that defense and focus on the facts rather than relying on how you feel. Paying attention to the feelings that go with the impulse to fictionalize will help you wake up to which emotions cause you to go into protect mode. If you are serious about changing your life, you'll have to be honest with yourself about when you do and don't see the truth inside the experience. For the next 24 hours, anytime you become irritated, ask yourself, am I making it up or is it true? Ask the question and be honest about the answer. When you are willing to be truthful, you can change the way you think. Making things up only keeps you stuck in your fears and frustrations. It gives no answers, but instead shuts the door to your future, whether that includes a new job, a new love, or a new you. If you are ready to accelerate your growth, focus on the following facts. Are you making it up or is it true? It keeps you honest and open with others. When you make things up, you are afraid to become vulnerable and therefore intimate. See the situation as is, taking your perceptions out and focusing on the facts. Facing when you make things up will help you to heal.